Oh, no, 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 no way are we talking about this, man. Look, I get it. You're pissed off of making this video. If you're a Canadians fan, you're upset at me for digging up old wounds. If you're a Senators fan, you're upset at me for bringing this entire idea up again. But let's piss off both fan bases because earlier this week on TVA Sports, we had ourselves a piece published by the one, the only, Jean-Charles Lejoie. He went out there and wrote this article on the website, which will be linked in the description below if you want to read it yourself. It's in French, I translated it to English, and the title of the piece reads, Is this a second chance for the Montreal Canadiens to get their hands on Brady Kachuk? Now yes, when I say old wounds, I mean like old, old wounds, because we did make a video about this very same topic three years ago. What if the Canadians drafted Brady Kachuk instead of Jesperi Kotkaniemi third overall? That was literally during 2020, 2021. And we talked about how at that time, the draft, which was two years removed at that point, the 2018 NHL entry draft, saw the Canadians took themselves a bust at the top of the crop. I think it's pretty fair to say that at this point, Jesperi Kotkaniemi isn't really all that we thought he'd be, but the Canadians passed up on Brady Kachuk in that third overall spot. They also passed up on Quinn Hughes, Evan Bouchard, a few other names that come to mind right away from that 2018 selection. But Kotkaniemi was the big one because he was the center, because the Canadians needed a center, because he wasn't really projected to going that high. It's just that the Habs really drafted for need at the third overall spot. And even as far back as 2020, we were making these videos, hey, what if they took Kachuk instead because he was the guy who went after and he's a lot better than KK. Let's go over the profile of Brady Kachuk before we dive into the article as to what JIC writes. Brady is now 24 years old, 6'4", 212 left-handed guy signed till the end of 2028, making $8.2 million a year. And when you look at his point production, he's been nothing short of pretty good. Last year, he had 83 points in 82 games played. This season, he's on pace for about 72, which is fine, even though it is a decline from the year before. It's mostly just a product of the entire Sens team as a whole going through what seemed to have been a year-long slump. Now, they've been stringing together some wins recently, and things have been going pretty well, but holistically, the Ottawa Senators had a pretty down year, especially when you compare it to the expectations that were bestowed upon them by many around the hockey world. JIC starts out his piece by talking about this enthusiasm and how six months later, the team which has lost just two games in a row yesterday in Nashville without even getting a single shot on target in the third period, finds itself 16 points from last place, giving access to the end of the playoffs. Ottawa hasn't been in the playoffs since 2017, and that won't change this spring. And Lauer took a long time with his trusted man Steve Steos to thank Pierre Dorian, who obviously did not figure in their plans. They were even slower to thank DJ Smith, whom the players liked, but who failed to bring order and structure to his group of guys. Not giving the job of coach or even CEO to Patrick Waugh was a maddening mistake. Huh, interesting perspective there. And now, Brady Kachuk is fueling trade rumors somewhere after the season. Now, if you needed the update as to what this entire thing is about, we did make a video just a few days ago going over the new thoughts. Essentially, you had Ryan Whitney on the Spit and Chicklets podcast tweet out that there are new rumors that Brady Kachuk may get traded sometime soon. That was the entire source as to why this thing has popped up. But this article goes out there in response to that idea. The Ottawa Senators have used 16 different goaltenders since 2018, including 12 different ones since 2020. Among them were Craig Anderson, Matt Murray, Gustafson, Talbot, Corpusallo. The five were better elsewhere than in Ottawa. The more things change, the more things stay the same. For what? Because all in Ottawa is crooked and lacks structure. Is it this observation that makes management think about the relevance of trading Brady Kachuk? Has Kachuk been identified as a negative leader on the team? It is certainly not for his qualities as a hockey player that would give him up. He has a unique DNA in the team's offensive strengths. He offers what no one else offers in the offensive group. And so, when it comes to this, I mean, I can kind of feel it, you know, I'm hearing the kettle pot burning in the side of my ear. Oh wait, is that a kettle or is that just Ottawa Senators fans' ears? Because yeah, this article is really provocative in the way that it depicts the Ottawa Senators and their captain. But let's continue on into what it says here. Let's say Steos and Ann Lauer decide to move their captain. There will be 31 GMs who will submit an offer, including Kent Hughes. The latter has good young players, especially on defense. He has draft picks in his pocket and room under the cap. 
Kent Hughes can make a very interesting push for the services of Brady Kachuk, who is only 24 and who will score at least 30 for the third year in a row. However, if the Senators request, if a certain logic sets in, should be Yuri Slavkovsky. So the question is, if you're Kent Hughes, do you trade Slavkovsky for Brady Kachuk? <laughs> oh no! This is where John Charles Lechois loses me, man. Look, I like the idea of just fueling the fire, getting a voice out there saying, hey, Brady Kachuk trade rumors, could he come to Montreal? Just make an article about it, see what's going on. But to suggest Slavkovsky, ooh boy, we've been talking about Uri the past few weeks. I don't know if that's an appropriate conversation to be having at this point, man. I don't know, Canadians fans might tear your head off in the same way Ottawa Senators fans want to. Let's proceed with the article. I'm very hesitant to say yes, but I'm dying to do it. Brady Kachuk is no longer a project, he's an established stud, a sure value and under contract for a long time at a smart price for what he brings in. He's the type of player who could accelerate a reconstruction plan and who would become an instant darling in Montreal and Quebec. I'm afraid, however, that Kent Hughes is very much in love with his first draft pick as GM and that he'll never trade this guy away. And so... Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a while since we've had ourselves a juicy trade idea, one that's definitely not going to happen, but one that was talked about nonetheless. Yuri Slavkovsky for Brady Kachuk certainly was not a conversation that I had on my bingo card in 2024, but here we are. The idea honestly makes a lot of sense if you wanted to just evaluate both of these guys. They're both fairly young, and they're both sort of representative of different timelines in their paths. Brady Kachuk right now, of course, 70-80 point guy. Yuri Slavkovsky on pace for about 40-50 points this year, but he is significantly younger. There is a lot more to look forward to when it comes to Slavkovsky and his development, and if you've been a fan of this channel, you shouldn't really be surprised to hear that. We've been talking about Slavkovsky every few days here, and it's just been a great conversation every time because he's so good. But if you were to trade him, I mean, getting a guy who is also young, but who is just kind of accelerated, you know, he's a few years down the line in his development, that makes sense to me. Especially when you think about it like, okay, Slavkovsky right now is 19, by the time he's 24, if he's getting 80, 90 points a year, then that's kind of what we want, right? That's kind of an ideal best case scenario. Well, guess what? Brady Kachuk is pretty much in that territory now. So if you wanted to just speed things up along a little bit and say, all right, we may not be too patient to wait four years for Slavkovsky to get to that level, so let's just trade him now for a guy who's already that now, and we'll get Brady Kachuk, and he'll play with Cole Caulfield, and he'll play with Suzuki, he'll do the thing, and he'll be a physical force, and he'll have an Anna sweater, because he's not taking that C away from Nick. Sorry, buddy, but that's just not happening. And then, for the Ottawa Senators, if you wanted to go full-on rebuild, retool mode, whatever, whatever, then getting younger extends your period of opportunities into the future. You have yourselves Tim Stutzla, 2020 guy, he's young. You have Josh Norris, still a pretty young guy too. It's not like Brady Kachuk is old by any means, but he is one of the older ones out of the young core in Ottawa. So if you wanted to focus on the Jacob Bernard Dockers, you wanted Jake Sanderson to really form his way on this team, you wanted Tim Stutzla to take over as a number one player in this league, then if you wanted to have a guy who more so fits that timeline, Brady Kachuk for Slavkovsky makes sense. But of course, I mean, nobody in Ottawa is going to be thinking about trading away their captain, especially under these circumstances. He's supposed to be the leader on the team to help everything move forward. In fact, if you go over onto Twitter, here's a tweet made by Lelimes Martian as to what Steve Steo said. He literally laughed out loud at the idea of trading Kachuk on the Gotcha Back podcast earlier yesterday. We're literally building around Brady Kachuk, he says. And then Martian goes out there and ats Ryan Whitney because Whitney was the guy who made the initial trade idea pop up in the first place. Brady's the leader that we need in this room. He's everything is advertised and I'm just doing my best to support him. So with this in mind, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on the idea of a Brady Kachuk trade to the Montreal Canadiens? And do you think the idea for Slavkovsky makes sense? Is this something you think about in the slightest? Is this something you don't even touch with a 10-foot pole? Ottawa fans, Montreal fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.